Um, what were some of the latent resources that you all had, I guess both within the gay community and within ACT UP in those early days that helped to make the movement a success? And what, if anything, do you think can translate to health movements today? Right. Well, I mean, that's the, the, the very mixed blessing of the early age years uh, in the U.S. It, it hit a community uh, predominantly, and that was gay men, um, mostly in the major cities. Um, we were not a nationally a, a nationally powerful uh, movement by any means. Uh, the LGBT movement at that stage, we couldn't get any laws passed. Um, but we were an organized movement. Uh, there had been some organizing since uh, Stonewall in 1969. Uh, the major national gay organizations, uh, Human Rights Campaign, LGB, uh, NGLTF, Lambda Legal, all of those had formed in the uh, 70s uh, and early 80s. Uh, so, so the structure was there, the community was there, um, uh, the, the social networks were there, and when this disease hit just this one community, uh, it had that base um, to start with, and that base was, uh, you know, crucial, just massive, because we definitely didn't have the country um, on our side, and um, so that that was a unique asset that a lot of other, you know, Alzheimer's just it, it doesn't hit one small community, and, and heart disease doesn't hit one small community. Uh, uh, breast cancer largely hits women, but, um, you know, it, it, it was a very unique circumstance. Um, but other movements, and including yours, has a, an advantage of numbers that we never had. Um, uh, you you have far more that are uh, suffering from ME than we had suffering from HIV in the, in the 80s. Um, and yet we still made it uh, the number one or the, the second largest uh, research budget at the NIH within five years. So, um, it, you know, small numbers of people can really make a lot of change. And you also have friends, you know, it's not just those who are affected. Only, I would guess, maybe a third of ACT-UP's membership were HIV positive, and very few of those were out about it. Um, and the rest were friends and family and lesbians and the community. Um, I thought it was particularly interesting when I asked you um, in one of our kind of pre-calls um, about sort of where, like, did you all just, like, know how to be activists? Because obviously you're coming from very different, you know, professional backgrounds, a different sort of training and skills, and yet we're able to do these sort of fairly masterful things. And yeah. you mentioned that there were a lot of um, uh, lesbian women in, like, early on in ACT UP who actually came with, uh, with sort of experience. Huge amounts of experience in uh, the uh, pro-choice movement, in uh, women's lib, um, uh, we had both, uh, and the older uh, generation uh, LGBT activists, both uh, uh, gay men and lesbians, uh, had experience with the gay rights movement in the 70s. We had a couple of uh, Stonewall veterans that uh, were in the rooms um, uh, that were actually participated in the Stonewall riots. So there was uh, experience from day one. And, and then tons of uh, people with no experience, uh, but from all occupations. Like I had a, a business, you know, I had this Wall Street background, which made me very comfortable dealing with pharmaceutical companies. Uh, I was not intimidated by sitting down with the CEO of a pharmaceutical company. And uh, we had people from uh, the media, uh, that worked at networks, and we had people in advertising and PR that, and the arts that created the most stunning visuals any movement has ever produced. And they didn't have prior civil disobedience experience, 
but they were able to add all these talents to the pool. And um, so ACT UP used that starter pack of hardcore social activist experience so that we knew how to do big demonstrations from day one. And we added all this and we, and we created something new with all our collective talents. Um, and every movement uh, creates its own playbook is what I'm trying to say. Um, you make your you make your own you make your own playbook. Uh, you look at you look at stuff like ACT UP. What ACT UP did. You can hear hear all my stories until the end of time. But yours is going to be different, and your your techniques are going to be different, and uh, ultimately the way you win it is going to be different, um, especially since technologies have changed. And um, uh, so. Uh, trust yourself to make mistakes and trust yourself to be creative, um, but you, you, you won't use the same playbook that we did. Um, that's incredibly helpful. And so I think from that I take away the importance of sort of taking stock of what our own latent resources are and trying to figure out how to, how to maximize them and how to sort of maybe do something that's, you know, creative because of the constrained design problem that we face. Um, and maybe may even be an inspiration to people down the line. 